So now let's design a singly linked list. It's a pretty basic one, but this one's going to be more involved than the dynamic array. We mainly want to support the get operation, getting the value of the ith node. And in this case, the ith node is starting at zero. So it's kind of like an array. And in this case, we do have to handle the edge case of what if i is out of bounds. In that case, we're just going to return negative one by default. We're going to have an insert head and insert tail method where they're going to be passed in some value and insert head is going to insert at the head of the list and tail is going to do the opposite insert at the tail of the list. Now, the way you define it actually doesn't matter. Like look at the code for a second and let's say I had a list like one, two, three, four. I could call this side the head if I wanted to, and I could call this side the tail if I wanted to. I could also do the opposite. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a pointer to both the head and the tail of the list, you will be able to do the other operations with the same time complexity uh, anyway. And that will be even more clear in the doubly linked list implementation, aka the Q problem. Moving on from that, we're also going to support the remove method, removing at the ith node, removing the node, and we're going to return a false if we were not able to remove the ith node, meaning it was out of bounds, and we return true if we were able to do that. And lastly, we will have a method to get all of the values in the uh, singly linked list and return them in the form of an array. So nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and get started. Before I even get into this, before I get into the linked list, I'm going to create a list node class. It's not necessarily required, but I think it's good. And this is pretty much a how linked lists are implemented anyway. It's a good use of abstraction and uh, encapsulating like all the data of the node together. Each node is going to be passed in two values. One is the value itself and another could be the next node, though by default, I'm going to set that to null. I don't think we'll be needing it for this problem. What I mean by that is I don't think we'll be needing to like pass it in as a parameter for this problem. And so we're going to have the value member variable and we're going to have the next member variable as well. That's going to be set to next node. This only has a single pointer because it's a singly linked list. Now let's get into the constructor. We're going to maintain two variables. One is the head pointer and one is the tail pointer. We don't have any parameters passed into this constructor, but we are still going to initialize this list with a single node. I'm just going to give it a default value of negative one. It doesn't really matter what value you give it, but basically this is our dummy node. It makes our life a lot easier for a lot of the edge cases that we have to handle specifically the edge case where our list is empty. When our when we have an empty list, inserting at the head is going to be different. But if we always have a dummy node that we ignore when we're getting the values from the list, it makes our life a bit easier. And that's what I explain in the singly linked list lesson in the uh, beginner's course. And our, our tail, before I forget, is then also going to be set to uh, the head as well. So whether we're inserting at the head or the tail, we can kind of assume that our list is always non-empty. For getting a value, we are going to have to get at this index. So to start this, we're going to want to start at the beginning of the linked list. So we're going to set current, we're going to have a pointer at the head of the linked list, and we want to iterate i times. So we'll have a pointer at index zero. And we want to keep going until this happens, until i is equal to the index that we're looking for. And if that's the case, what are we going to do? We're going to return the value of the current pointer. But the problem here is that we started our current pointer at the head, and we know for sure that we always have a dummy node at the head. So what we should actually do here is ignore the dummy node and set this to current.head.next. And instead of having this if statement here, I could do that. And then I could also have a while loop. I'm actually going to combine the two. I'm going to have a while loop here. While our current pointer is non-null, we're going to be shifting our pointer. But before we shift our pointer, we should have this if statement go first, because as soon as this executes, as soon as this is true, we want to return. But if it's not true, then we want to shift our pointer. Then we want to say current is equal to current.next. And uh, not only that, we are also going to then go ahead and increment our i pointer as well. Now, it is possible that this index does not exist. Like we don't have that many nodes. 
and that is going to be handled by the while loop. If our current pointer ever reaches null, then out here, we're going to return negative one. We got an index out of bounds. So that's how we're gonna be getting a node. You can see we do have to manage the fact that we have a dummy node, but it's really not too bad here. It's gonna make our life easier in the insert head method. And if you don't believe me, you can actually try coding this problem up without a dummy node. That would be probably the best way to understand why it makes our life easier. So in the insert head, we are given a value and we wanna insert this into our linked list. So we should take that value and convert it into a node. And we can do that just like this. And we're inserting at the head of the linked list. And the fact that we have a dummy pointer is going to make that insertion easier. The first thing, though, that we're going to do is set new nodes next pointer equal to the head pointer. This is our dummy node. Remember, we want to set it. We want to set this dot next equal to head dot next. And it could be possible that head dot next is null. That's OK, because we know for sure head is not going to be null. The reason we're doing this first is because after that, we want to set our dummy pointers next pointer equal to the new node pointer. So we're going to say head.next is equal to new node. If we were to do this line before this line, you can see that we'd have a problem because we're using the same pointer here. We would end up reassigning this before we got a chance. Like this would be pointing at itself, I'm pretty sure. Now, there is one edge case that we have to handle, and that is the fact that our tail pointer should always be pointing at the last node. What if our tail pointer was pointing at the dummy node? What if our linked list was empty and we tried to insert at the head? Right now, our tail pointer would not be pointing at the last node, which is the new node that we just inserted. It would be still pointing at the dummy node, at the like first dummy node that we uh, created here. So to fix that, we can say if the next pointer of the new node is null, so we say new node dot next, if not that, then we'll say self dot tail is going to be equal to the new node. So this is only if the list was empty before inserting. Next, let's insert at the tail. This one is actually going to be a bit easier than inserting at the head because we know that our dummy node is going to be at the head of the list, not at the tail of the list. So there's two cases here. Either our list is empty, meaning that tail actually points to the dummy node. So in that case, it would be fine to just say tail dot next is equal to a list node with this value. And we don't even have to set the next pointer of this because it's already going to be pointing to null by default. And then we can move our tail pointer to the new node that we just inserted. I didn't create like a variable for it because we're already storing a pointer there. So we can say self dot tail dot next. So this works for the case where our list is already empty. Would it also work for the case where our list is non empty? Yeah, because in that case, the tail will point to a real node. And then the next pointer of that real node will point to this new node. And then we'll move the pointer exactly the same as the other case. So it does work in both cases. Now we have our remove method down here. This is going to be the most involved of all. We want to remove the node at this index. So we will have like a variable i equals zero and we'll have our current pointer set to the head. The reason I'm not doing head dot next is because when we remove a node from a linked list, we need a reference to the pointer before the node that we're trying to delete because then we can do the pointer manipulation. So what we're gonna say here is while i is less than the index and our current pointer is non-null, we're going to increment our index and shift our pointer like this. Now let me explain what we're trying to do here is move current to node before the target node. And we do have to consider the edge case of what if that node doesn't exist. So that's why we're having i is less than index and we're starting at the dummy node intentionally because if we shift our pointer this many times we will arrive at the node before the target node and it's possible that we might run out of bounds that's why we have this second case here and the current node is non-null so this will achieve what we're looking for this will move our current pointer to the node before the target node if it exists so we have to check that we have to check if current exists now and we have to check if current.next exists 
because we want to confirm that the target node exists and the node before the target node also exists. If this stuff is confusing, I highly recommend drawing it out. And that's kind of what we do in the singly linked list lesson in the algorithms course. Now, removing at this point is actually really, really easy. We just say current.next is equal to current.next.next. What this does is it, instead of current pointing at this node, it's going to point at the node after that. And then here we can return true because remember we're returning a Boolean true if we were successful. Now, if this if statement does not execute, in that case, we're gonna go ahead and return false out here. Now, believe it or not, there's one little edge case that we're missing. What if we just deleted the last node in the list? What if we just deleted the tail? We never updated the tail pointer. Now it would be theoretically pointing to the wrong node. So before we do the deletion, let's check. Is current.next equal to self.tail? That's the node that we're trying to delete. So if it's equal to the tail, let's go ahead and set the tail equal to the node before current.next, which of course is just current. That is handling all the edge cases for remove. And lastly, we have get values. This is basically just a traversal over the linked list. So we will start our current pointer at self.head.next because we definitely don't want to include the value of the demi node. I'm going to have a result variable here. You could call it values or nums or whatever. And that's what we're going to be returning. But before we return it, we have to actually build it. And we can do that uh, while current is not out of bounds. We're going to say append to the result the value of the current node and then shift the current node to the next pointer. So that's the entire code for the singly linked list problem. Now it was definitely a lot of code, but fundamentally there's a lot of overlap. And once you can kind of understand how to build a linked list, that will make solving linked list problems a lot easier. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. We passed all of the test cases and we will be the first person to get a submission on this problem. So I'll leave things there.